There's a lot of cars outside. Hello, everybody. Do you have a hard time finishing your first draft? Are you caught in an endless loop of never being able to finish it? Then I am here to help. And you may be wondering, why should I trust you to tell me how to finish my first draft? Simple, I've actually finished mine. I've actually finished numerous drafts of my first novel. So these are the tips and tricks that I used in order to finally sit down and finish my first draft. Like many of you, I spent years with the ideas for this first novel in my head. I knew the characters, the plot, where I wanted to go, kind of plot twists, I had a lot of the world building done. All I needed to do was write it. So, if you're anything like me, these five tips will help you finish your first draft. Step number one, you have to start writing. We both know you make excuses why you don't write every day, why you haven't written it yet, about your writer's block, about how you don't have time. It's all... So, first things first, I wanna make it clear what I mean when I say, write every day. I don't mean outlining your book. I don't mean creating characters, fleshing them out, world building, none of that. It's not what I mean. Those things do not add to your word count. They are vital parts of the novel writing process, but in the end, they don't add to your word count. When I say write every day, I mean putting fingers to a keyboard and writing sentences about the plot that you've been thinking about. So, start writing, stop outlining, stop world building, stop working on character creation. You don't need to know your character's Meyer Briggs type to start writing. Number two, be prepared to make sacrifices. So, you wanna write a novel. As you may or may not know, this is a very difficult thing to do and it's time consuming and a lot of people never get to make a career out of it. But if you want to be a writer, you wanna be an author, you wanna write your novel, get it out there, get it published, then you have to start accepting that you have to make sacrifices. No more binge watching Planet Earth on Netflix, no more Wine Wednesdays with the girls. You have to accept that writing this novel is going to take some sacrifices. So if you aren't prepared to make these kind of sacrifices, you need to reevaluate how badly you really want to write this novel and how badly you want to be an author. Number three, set a time goal. I don't mean I'm going to finish my novel by, you know, in three months, which it's doable if you're a full-time writer, but if you're like me and you're a student or you have a job or both, it is not realistic. What I mean by a time goal is every day you set a time frame in which you are going to just sit and write. So for me, when I was writing my first draft, this was 30 minutes. 30 minutes every day I would sit down, I would, you know, log out of the internet, I would have like an internet blocker up, I wouldn't check my phone, and I would just write for 30 minutes straight. Now this is not going to work for every person. Some people prefer scene goals or word goals, that sort of thing, which is fine and it works and I've done word goals and scene goals before. But I found that for me, since I'm a full-time graduate student and I'm working about 30 hours a week, it just was unrealistic to expect myself to finish certain scenes in a day or to reach a certain word count goal. It was easier for me to say, okay, every day I sit down for 30 minutes, I time it out and I just write. However much I get done, I finish. That's what I do. When I'm done my 30 minutes, then I'm done. 30 minutes is not that much time, but say you don't have 30 free minutes. You could do 10, 15, 20. However much time you can find in the day, you have to sit down and focus on just writing. For that amount of time, you can devote to the art of writing. Number four, write even on days when you don't feel like writing. We all have those days, we get up, we see we have a busy day ahead of us, and we just don't feel like putting pen to paper that day. However, this kind of mindset has the ability to easily snowball, and one day can easily turn into a week, which can turn into a month, which can turn into a year of not writing, and at that point, you aren't a writer anymore. You're just someone who aspires to be a writer. I know it can be hard to write on those days when you just 
feel like the world is coming down on you, but it's really important that you push through it. Don't make excuses for writer's block and write. Otherwise, your novel's never going to get finished. Number five. And this one I'd say is a little bit controversial because it won't work for everyone, but I'm working under the assumption that you are like me and you are not able to finish your first draft because you keep obsessing over what you've already written, whether it's good or not, ways to fix it, and you keep editing. So number five is to not edit. But when I decided to finally sit down and write my first draft, I was able to actually get it done because I stopped obsessing over what I had already written and going back and editing it and editing it and editing it until I no longer even knew if it was good or not anymore because I had obsessed about the same section, scene, chapter for so long. If you are having this issue where you keep wanting to go back and rewrite your first, second, or third chapter, you need to put down the red ink and just move on. Just keep writing. There will be plenty of time after you finish writing your first draft to get to editing. Your first draft might not be very good, but a first draft's only purpose is to exist. It's easier to work with a bad page than it is to work with a blank page, if that makes sense. So my last piece of advice is just finish writing it. Just stop worrying about if it's good or not and just write the plot out. You can make it good later. So if you like this video, subscribe down below, hit that bell to be notified when I post a new vlog every Friday, like this video, roast me in the comments if you so choose. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr. I'll leave the links to all of my social media in the description bar down below.